Hey, how you guys doing? It's Producer from Brothers Comics. Welcome to the Marvel Hacks. It's our X-Men 97 recap, y'all. We are going to get almost up to date. Uh, we had teased it before, what we were going to do, and we're going to execute that plan very much like the NFL draft. On the line, it's Brother Beavis. Say what's happening. Hey, what's up, y'all? Yes, this show is a first round pick, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it, it might have a couple of flaws, not character flaws, but you know, there's uh, only, I guess, a lack of experience because there's not that many sh episodes. But you know, the film they got on tape is, uh, is <laughs> first round quality. Would you agree? Absolutely. Like in the in the pantheon of cartoons, like you know, this definitely hits the ground running. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think if, if we had a short discussion, like Earth's Mightiest Heroes is up there. Like Justice League got there, but uh, they they had to sit on the bench for a couple of years to yeah. kind of learn the position <laughs> before they uh, you know made the Pro Bowl for the first time. Yeah. So yeah, no, this is this is great, and uh, I think it a lot of ways it it it, it fixes some, but then it is it's just it's a, it is a different show from the first run, but like the just the production quality of it is so much better. Although there was some shaky aspects of episode six, that, yeah. yeah. And so what we had teased was that when Life Death came on part one, it ran in front of a jubilee sunspot and mojo bit that to be fair we're not even really going to talk about because it <laughs> it's not really worth talking about is mojo that's basically it and then it's ran on the episode end of ep or in interspersed with episode six in between this other story which we're going to get to tonight so we're going to combine life death one and two and talk about episode six uh with charles and lalandra and the shiar and do all of those together and then we're going to kind of lead into a lead about episode seven because as i had text y'all after i watched it it was the first filler episode not saying that it was bad but it was definitely filler mm -hmm. i i might challenge that okay uh, we'll get to it at the end that's fine we'll get to it at the end I, I, it, it was i it was it was more to me, it was more like a issue zero. <laughs> <laughs> it was the setup for the story to follow. So. That's fine. Yeah. Filler. All right. Anyway. Now let's go, y'all. So it's our comic book inspiration for Life, Death, Parts 1 and 2. Uh, it was like 186. I got a typo over there. And then 198. So uh, that's the funny part here. Like, everybody's like, oh, it's Life, Death, Part 1 and 2. But this story spanned not just the storm and forge love story but there's a whole ass dire race uh native american magical story that goes in between all of these issues and again however you feel about the life death parts of it and i have a feeling about it, mm. it it's definitely condensed it, it probably if you were going to do it probably deserved more than the back end of an annual and interspersed in between another episode would you agree yeah uh and it, again like the thing that's hit me about this is they are just churning through like you know not only the number of stories but the the complexity of stories and the number and the way they're getting through it it, it <laughs> my take was either like they were assuming they were going to get canceled uh, mm. before they finished the story which I, at this point would be ridiculous because there's not another thing of this quality, I think, that that they're putting out. Mar they Marvel are putting out like in any platform, mm. um, or they're trying to bridge between, you know, the the classic era and the modern era, <clears throat> and burn through this this sort of dead period of like the 2000s, uh, late 90s, whatever, just to try and get to where all of this stuff makes sense with the contemporary MCU. Right, because I think that's the thing is right. It you you could still have X Men stories playing out, but to get to maybe the kind of interaction or where the MCU, the where the rest of the MCU is, you you kind of necessarily have to bring the X Men into that future future realm of storytelling. Right. Yeah. It it again, and I don't know if it's much as a criticism or it's just like, man, that was really fast that you told that story so quickly you know it's had a lot more depth to it but again 10 episodes they've already been approved for season two like it's yeah. and i think it's already in the can we just have to wait for it to come out and i'm sure i read something that they were saying that they would like to 
you know, do another two seasons, kind of like back to back or whatever. And again, like most shows, cartoons, musicians, artists or whatever, like a little is enough. And then once you start getting into that part where, hey, we need to we want to produce it just because we can and we Mm -hmm. should. Then you start to lose the quality a little bit, which happened with the original cartoon. Yeah. You know, they told a story and they were like, oh, yeah, by the way, we got to do two more seasons after Dark Phoenix. What? Yeah. Never mind. Like, and what's the point? The And that's, you know, a lot of the, the first series fell apart because they were trying to tell the stories, but like subbing in different characters or not, you know, bring, you know, like because they did some semblance of like the Age of Apocalypse or things mm-hmm. like that. But it was like just with a patchwork of characters or just other stuff they'd made up in the background. So it got weird. Like you could kind of, you could kind of like draw a line between that and a comic book somewhere, but kind of not. So, you know, it's, they were, you know, we were struggling to think about like, what are the stories that, you know, they're, you know, what are they, what are they going to do? And they, Mm -hmm. they've definitely like, you know, hit on some, you know, even if it's just, you know, a, a significant issue or a significant storyline, they've definitely picked up some important stories or moments for different characters. But at this pace, they are going to outrun, you know, the things yeah. that are worth putting on the show for Correct. sure. And you're going to outrun the, what I would call the standard people that are reading. The, it's like wrestling. Mm-hmm. There's people that, like stick with wrestling no matter what and they're watching wwe now and they might dip into aew and just because that's what their habit is that's what it is but it's a very small niche audience that we found out there's not a real like crossover appeal for really wrestling now i think comics are the same way there are people like us that enjoy reading the comic books that we grew up with and like and every time we dip ourselves into aew or wwe it's just like uh, yeah. maybe this isn't what I want. It looks like what I want, but it's not really what I want. And I think, oh yeah, we got to go through and tell these stories. We're gonna like get to the, you know, we're already in Grant Morrison a little bit. That's iffy, but now we're gonna go past that and all of these books where we were completely out and mm-hmm. have no idea what the hell was happening. And I think that's probably the majority of comic book fans at this point. And now you're telling these stories to a very niche, small audience who, you know, won't pop wrestling term, you know, when they see something that happens like straight from the comic book, which we're seeing now. So would you, would you think it's fair to say like that the best MCU, I guess either movies or shows have been the ones that are more direct adaptations of things that have been in the comics. I was just saying like, like Avengers is good, but it's not strictly a story per se. Avengers two, again, not really. So, you know, Captain America, winter soldier, the origin stories, the civil war to the extent that they pulled it off. Mm. Uh, Obviously infinity war end game. A lot of the, the origin stories. I mean, I, those are kind of the best. And that, Mm. that makes me think like, okay, are you going to, are you going to have told all the original stories in this in this cartoon over okay. its two incarnations? And so, when we do get the X Men, are you going? Are you, you going have to rehash those things, or yeah. are you going to you going to give us a new story, or what? Uh, yeah. Or have they already earmarked a story that, like we said, is from the current books that it will be? That's that's what we're trying to get to. Hard to say. Yeah. I, uh, again, we'll talk about it here in a second, but. Uh, it feels like all of this is leading to Krakoa, mm-hmm. you know, which would be, you know, kind of the last modern era story that we we've read, but, and following the, the writer that got fired on Twitter, you know, he said to go back and watch one man's worth, which I think is from season four, which they do like this BS age of apocalypse, or at mm-hmm. least a lot of the character designs are from that. And, you know, that's a Nimrod story with Fitzroy uh, in the cartoon. Mm -hmm. And so, okay. Uh, But he had said that, like, oh, no, Age of Apocalypse Apocalypse would need, like, a whole season in and of itself. So we're not getting Age of Apocalypse. So, again, there's a little bit of curiosity about how that, you know, something that we talked about a lot of these Marvel Disney shows. Can y'all stick the landing? Mm -hmm. The TV shows have been more misses than hits in doing that. 
uh, cartoon might be a little bit easier to pull off because you're not dealing with the human whatever element. So I'm I'm very curious. But yeah, I, I just for this version of this story, if you cared about this story, taking out dire race and all of that stuff, you really kind of short changed it. And then the ending of it makes no sense compared to what the comic <laughs> book is. But we're, we're, we're going to talk about that, too. All right. So part one of Life, Death, Storm is recovering from her loss of her powers with Forge. You know, he kind of picked her up there. They even allude to you know what happened in Dallas. Well, what happened in Dallas is the freaking dire race stuff. Um, but no dire race. Sorry, Hutch. No ROM either. Uh, and we, you know, we start to see their love story unfold. So I went back and read Life, Death, One and Two. Um, Forge was a dick. <laughs> like he was terrible to her, minus the, what we're gonna reveal or whatever. But he was pretty awful to her as she was going through this life changing event. Was it? Were we supposed to read it as tough love? I, I guess just, yeah. it read like mass, mass massive misogyny is what it read like in <laughs> 2024. Um, but uh, it, it, you know, he, she just couldn't, you know, get over this idea mm -hmm. essentially like kind of let me die. And he's like, you know, I love you, but shut the fuck up, get up, <laughs> get out of bed. Like it's, it's really bad. And that it, it, again, it reads like 1986 or whatever the hell it is, which is fine. But, yeah, it's he's just not great, you know. And then we get that we even get Storm in her, you know, her overalls in the cartoon, and she had them on in there. And their love story unfolds in the comic book over time, you know, with dinners and uh, is swimming e excursions, and then this it's like horseback riding, and you know, a little bit of wine too, because I thought Storm never had it before, or is that in the comic? I can't even remember now. Uh, never drank wine before. I thing was in the, it's comic. in the comic. Yeah, it's just and like, oh, it tickles. And the first part was like in his in his like his skyscraper building or whatever where yeah, he had holograms. The holograms. All yeah, all right, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, again, <sighs> however you feel about that actual story, it's a lot better with Dire Race. <laughs> just saying. Like, if you're just taking the love story part of that, it's not great. And because, again, you have Chris Claremont. What the hell does he know about writing this kind of crap? And also, it has all the Native American stuff, and it gives him his, you know, his want, his Canadian want to allevi alleviate his Canadian Native guilt by talking about Native American stuff. It's, it's, it's a lot. Not a, not a one-shit book. Anyway. Chris Claremont. White guilt and yes. black sugar, brown sugar. You know, those <laughs> two loves all mixed together. He was <laughs> like, oh, oh, he's cooking. Yes, he is cooking something here. All right. Remember so how there. we, when we were like we, in the early days of like the post giant size X Men, where like every the, every villain they fought was yeah. just wanted to hook up with Storm. Yeah, it's like Ooh. <laughs> like Dracula once said Doctor yeah, Doom. Exactly. Everybody was like Dracula the, Doom. Yeah. <laughs> everybody was like Ooh. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's awful. Okay, so again, they a truncated story. We get the the dire race in there. It, it, it's and it goes all the way through, like from life death one to life death two. I mean, there's a whole big story in there. I think Ramita was on the book for a few of those. I mean, it's a lot, mm -hmm. and then they condensed it into probably between both segments. Call it twelve minutes, probably maybe 15 yeah it wasn't maybe. long yeah i mean it it goes all the way through and then you know when we get to the adversary which we're going to talk about here now then that story is completely off where you know what what's his friend's name nazi we call him maize we call him <laughs> corn May. nazi <laughs> his native american yeah. friend from vietnam uh who you know has some lightweight jealousy himself and he's the one that winds up unleashing the adversary into you know the human world it's a lot going well, on well i comic. think what if i'm not mistaken he gets killed and then the adversary manifests through him i don't okay. think he unlocks i don't think he's responsible for bringing yeah. the adversary in mm -hmm. if i remember yeah, and speaking of and maybe there's a slide on this but they completely like they they might have barely alluded to it but they they completely leave out like the Vietnam War when Forge, mm -hmm. you know, opens up the portal and brings the adversary into the material plane to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, uh, I don't think I have a slide for it, but yeah, that 
I think I think because they've already the like in this they've said you know he's already guilty of making the technology. Well, guess what? He's also guilty of bringing the adversary. <laughs> the adversary in the yeah. as well. Like he fucked everything up. Yeah, but I mean, they ride horses. They're in yep. love, and they then do. there's the reveal. All right. So her lack of powers, and as it talks about later, her lack of having her powers and her bitterness from that, as well as Forge's guilt after it's discovered that he created the, you know, the 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 bands that knocked off their power on Genosha, like his guilt over that and having built the government weapon that wind up taking her powers, that brings the adversary out that is attracted to all the bitterness and whatever you know her line about i wish i was human sometimes to gene in episode one comes back to her and it's alluded to that the reason that she's got all this self-pity and all of this that's the reason that her powers are gone not necessarily because Mm -hmm. of the weapon so that's a bit of a dip from the comic book. That's for sure. What did you think about that reveal? Yeah, I was confused because, uh, like, I think I texted you that one day. Like, did she just like decide? Yeah, I don't I'm good. You know, I want my powers back. So it was. <laughs> I, I like it. The biggest relief for me is I I I feel like we we are going to avoid two hundred one. <laughs> like that's what this episode did for me. So she may, she might still take the leadership of the team, but not without yeah, powers. Not. Um, you know, it was what I did like that the creepiness of the adversary. Yeah, uh, and I I'm not I I like the sound. There's there's been a lot of the sound design of the show that I really like, and I I would assume that the voice of the adversary is probably constructed by layering some of storm's own voice acting over mm. it. You can kind of hear it at times. Sometimes she's like directly mocking her or whatever. Um, and you can see it, but I thought like in terms of the way it moved, um, the way it spoke, like yeah. it, it did very, it did very much seem like I'm that trickster kind of demon. Like I, I Obviously, I can't there for for whatever reason, I can't just obliterate you. And then maybe mm-hmm. this case because I, I feed off your energies or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it had that it had a very creepy demonic nature of it that made it an interesting thing. Like you could if if there was a, you know, a retcon and this was all in her head, you could still buy that because right. that was fundamentally what this was about. This was about Storm, you know, reconciling who she was and, and, you know, what she was at her core, which is a story that's been told in, you know, over a course of number of books, just outside of life death as well. Like mm-hmm. even the transition to the Mohawk, you know, her reconciliation with what it meant to be the goddess and, and mm-hmm. all those things. So it was definitely a storm story. I think condensing it, not a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, what we got was I think fine. Yeah. It, it does feel like they artificially made it seem like a longer story just by sticking something in the middle of it. Right. Um, but the whole reveal of like, oh, you know what? I'm done. I want my powers back. That was kind of yeah. weird. Yeah. So I, I, it, I agree about the creepiness of the adversary and the way it's filmed as well, or as the way it's animated with its head turning. Like, I mean, mm. it, it's, it's kind of creepy, you know, uh, for a Saturday morning cartoon mm-hmm. on Wednesday, three o'clock in the morning cartoon. Um, yeah, so it, it was fine. Out of that, Forge also gets bit and, you know, has this demonic whatever going through his shoulder uh, and it's this attempt to save. I mean, it's I, 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 I think we've said this about a bunch of things. It was like, well, that was the best life death story they could have probably told. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. basically what it is. Like, if you had given too much, it probably would have been too much. And you probably hit it right on the nose. And it, it, it feels like, hey, we need to have, like, a storm-centric story in this season because she's such an important character. Mm-hmm. And again, honestly, p- colors of or characters of color shunned in many and all, like, ver- <laughs> versions of media. So let's give her a story that, you know, people have there. We have Forge in it as well. You know, everybody knows that they have this version of a love story or whatever. We got Bishop out of here, so we don't have that weird part of it. So, yeah, we're good. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I had no real problem with it, you know, moving forward. You know, and then, you know, when Forge does recover and they send it off at the end of Life or Part 2, like, is he using Doctor Strange powers? (laughs) Because it definitely it certainly it, looked like it. 
Yeah, it definitely did. Like uh, with the all the rings and the lashing and yeah. things like that. Yeah, and the book sure. on the floor was that the dark hole? I would have to think not. Like he just attributed it to unless there's many instances of the dark hole, which I don't believe that there is. He okay. he attributed it to his you know that what his said. My mom practiced desert magic, and some yeah. of it stuck. Yeah, like oh, yeah. they they just they layered layered in some some uh, some yeah. throwaway lines on this just to like <laughs> yeah. oh, we didn't forget. We just don't have time to fuck with it practicing the white man's magic that's was that right. shaman's line or whatever from alpha flight oh god <laughs> that's john burn though so we we can slide on that one um so as she goes out into the desert to search for his mama's freaking chicken soup recipe cure for his disease the adversary does come back we know that obligatory storm forced into you know yeah. a claustrophobia situation but again she finds herself and finds the power within to be able to do that and you know she's able to send off the adversary as she goes through it and as her transformation is again i call it her lemonade moment here like beyonce she transforms back into her og dave cockrum costume and it was like what <laughs> all right yeah was not expecting like uh the the culmination of her journey was to get her back to where she started in the book yeah. but <laughs> I was definitely hyped. I was like, yes. "Oh shit!" Yeah. Hey. So because you know her, you know, I think the the all black outfit was. I think that was a gold era transition, and then it just kind of weirdly transformed in the comic to the same thing, but white, which yeah. never really made sense. And then they, so I don't know. I, I her she her outfit seemed kind of like kind of generic uh, mm -hmm. in the original run and in in the early parts of this. So yeah, no, this was this was a welcome addition, but yes, completely unexpected. Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Uh, I mean, and again, the design looked great. They did it the way they did it. That's fine. I have no problem with it. You know, does that mean we get a return to? But everybody else, I guess, is wearing their costumes that we would be used to. I guess. I mean, right? Cyclops is still in his Jim Lee era. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. you know, it, it, we, I guess the next hurdle is, are we going to get racer X, which seems mm. increasingly likely they're, they're going to try and fuck him up somehow. So, yeah, they, yeah. So she goes back, love is in the air. And they're like, Hey, you know what? Let's go off to a desert Island. She's like, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. They turn the TV on yeah. and then they get to see the we destruction of Genosha. So I hope you weren't going there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause that would be bad, but uh, that's life death y'all. Again, we did it in six slides, five if you don't count the title. Um, I, I mean, I, I have no problem with it. It seems like a get us from point A to B type of story. It did that. I can't really complain. It's just, I get, if you're a reader of the comics, you're going to be like, well, that seems like kind of quick, but probably the best life death story we could get. 